Bitch ass motherfuckers are rampant and I don't know what the fuck is going on. If there was a stock in bitch ass motherfuckers, that shit would be going up. 500% Buy. bruh. I would put all of my <laughs> fucking money behind that bitch. Fuck Bitcoin. Fuck Bitcoin. Bitch ass niggas is literally the stock I would invent in. Invest. Invest in. Invent in. Invest in Venton. You fucked up. I did. 500%. If literally bitch made people were a fucking stock, I would invest in that heavily. All my money. Take it all. I don't care. Yeah, this shit would be going up. Up, 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 up. Bruh, to the moon. To the moon! If I like to live on the moon. <laughs> Oh, I'd like to visit the moon, but I don't think I can do Even Aaron Neville knew you don't live there. Yo, you don't stay on the moon. You yeah, gotta yeah, you don't go up, shit. up, up. It, that stock can't go up. Nah, you can't live on the moon. You could visit there. You could be a bitch sometimes. You know, it's okay. You can, you can, you can dabble and bitch them. Dabbling okay to be and bitch them is okay. I mean, Jung talked about visiting both sides you got to explore the other side every once in a while you got to integrate frame you got to get a little bit of bitch made in you every once in a while <laughs> wait this is going really south <laughs> <laughs> sorry too far yeah yeah because we don't want to encourage that stock no no i mean only if y'all are not going public i mean if 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 bitch made becomes a public stock i'll let it rock Hickory dickory dock. <laughs> I'ma let that shit rock. <laughs> Why does this sound like an 80s rap? <laughs> Hickory dickory dock. I'ma let that shit rock. Uh. Mm. I was going to curse, but people in the 80s didn't curse like that. Huh. <laughs> 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 well, who's the first rapper to ever do that weird breath thing? Someone who was too poor to buy a turntable. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Is that what it was? Yeah. He was trying to go. Oh, 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 yeah, oh, oh, yeah. What do you think? What else could it have been? I don't know. Some primal shit. He was I just trying to. Not. He was trying to check them. Why? You better be afraid of me. Nah, I don't think. Always be afraid of the guy who's going. Oh, 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 oh. We were just talking about that earlier because we were we we're walking through the streets making. I mean, if you think this is bad, we're walking through the streets just making all sorts of fucking weird alien <laughs> we're just noises, gurgling and shit, gurgling like little ger like gerbils. Okay, because we were just in the middle of a story and it just required that we made some gerbil noises. And the look on this Spanish dude's face—he literally walked two steps to Yo. the side of me. Because I would too. He was creating a very nice social distancing bubble beyond what was actually necessary. Bro, he, he was I scared the shit out of him. But we were just there like... <laughs> <laughs> like, that shit was wet. <sighs> we sounded like tapioca pudding falling off the side of a building. <laughs> it was bad. <laughs> But then again, I don't know. If I walk by that, I would also think that we're rabid. Yeah, that was some. That was some, especially at night. You don't want to hear some sounds like that at night. But at the same time, bro, you're in New York City. Like, you might meet some gerbils. Yeah, there there are human gerbils out there. You gotta <laughs> you gotta drink a tall glass of man up, walk with confidence. It, like, it's the same way that when you're on a New York City subway and there's a crazy person there, you just, you, you make a decision whether you're going to deal with this or you're going to calmly walk away. He decided to sort of calmly walk away, but he played his cards, like he put his cards on the table and let us know his hand, which is I should have chased him down for a yes, block. continued gurgling at him for like half a block at least. Yeah, I should have chased him down a city block. Because. Just for that. So he understands you better never disrespect that gerbil. Dude, we were so we were on a mission to get cold brew coffee. That that was our nefarious mission for the night. 
and um shit you do in brooklyn right we we were it was completely innocent we really just wanted to get some cold brew and i forgot that i had my bandana on and i was walking down the streets of this end of bed and like there was at least 65 the wider percent. side of bed yeah there was like 65 percent of the people who we walked by that were terrified of my existence I'm wearing a Malcolm X shirt, I have a bandana on, and people gave us space on the sidewalk. I mean, granted, for, it, for at least in Spanish dude's defense, uh, we were gurgling. <laughs> <laughs> we, we were gurgling, so sure. You need to stop calling it that, bro. That's like <laughs> Pause, sus. I guess. Pause? Sus. Fuck. I think Bru- gerbling. Ger... <laughs> also doesn't work in 2021 anymore bro because there's hamster shit that people do <laughs> the furry community that might offend the furry community there's the furry community there's the people who use hamsters for nefarious purposes for butts Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, i mean God. i don't discriminate you know no. if that's your prerogative just don't hurt the hamster yeah you know please make sure the hamster at least gets some treats afterwards or we something. live in the greatest country on earth and if you want to put a hamster in certain entry and exit ways <laughs> you, <laughs> it's manifest destiny that you carve your own path just not too deep and not too wide because it leads to bleeding you gotta be an american maverick Proud to be an American where at least I know I'm free. Mm-hmm. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen, my brother. Mm-hmm. Pickup truck. In your pickup truck. <laughs> In your pickup truck. <laughs> Message. Hey, to the next subscriber, you get uh you get one of us to put on the the Habibi the Habibi uh what what is that called? People do that. So it's the male version of the curtsy, right? Men take their hat. They it's tipping your hat. It's got to be a word for it. I know it is tipping your hat, bro. All right. If you donate to our Patreon, every time you'll hear a little money bell, and it'll just go. And we'll just do this. Ching. Money. Tip our hats off to you. Absolutely. <laughs> but yes, um, rewinding back. Yo, people are bitch made as fuck right now. People, people, people. It's exactly. either men or women. Both. Yeah, a lot of bitches. Ho- like both sides are broken. Soft. Very brittle spirit. To use Dave Chappelle's word. No constitution. Yeah. Where's your core? Um, you can't have a core. Uh, to echo back to our podcast episode, which will link right so to somewhere here. We spoke about this is people who grew up online didn't have the time to grow up to hu- to be a person to human and it almost indefinitely produces a brittle spirit because if you live in a curation of where everything is ar- that you see that you see and interact with is a safe place where ju- there is no judgment and uh, you're aided and abetted by the circumference of a gynocentric society. Yes, it will. Words will become violence. D- different ideas must be shut down. Um, you need a safe space because you're not used to people thinking, acting, operating, believing, and having general different belief systems and ethos outside of your supposed pure you know puristic i don't know if that's a word but pure puritan your puritan yeah, i'll take that ideology and yeah that's gonna produce super thin skin man and it's 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 definitely not a way to model society you're never gonna have peace even with the phrase like the popular colloquialism i can't even 
shows exactly the cognitive dissonance. Because, Weakness. Because if you can't even, that means that you aren't even completing your sentence to even process the emotion that you're actually feeling. You're quitting even before you get to that point. You can't even just means that you aren't dealing with the situation. You aren't even coming to the table. You, you know, stop eating at McDonald's. You might have more energy. Um, stop consuming on your phone for... How many times you told me recently the average time amount of time someone checks their 92 phone? 92 times a day. 92 times. I think that's small. I think that's like a, a, a conservative number. Very. That's I would say it's the, much more for the younger people. I think that that's just the general median. average. That's so, like a median yeah, average. That's the median average. That's 92 times a day. So um, on my phone, I actually installed a counter for me to actually keep this in mind like i want to know how many times i open my phone a day is that like with an app um luckily with my phone that it's natively built in it's it's digital well-being like it's in the digital well-being center of my phone so i i'm crazy hyper cognizant of the amount of time i spend on my phone because it literally gives me a arbitrarily that, yeah it, no it's it's li- no, no, I mean like how you spend your time on the phone. Let's Correct. be clear about how you use your phone. Correct. You're talking about arbitrary time on the phone. Correct. Yes. Being a but, voyeur. Right. Being a voyeur, we're not talking about work. We're not talking about finance. We're not talking about tap to pay stuff. Because at the end of the day, it's, it's either a tool that you use or a tool that uses you. For sure. Because you're either providing data or you're just existing. So fragile people. You got to get off your phones because something I've noticed, okay, I'm um, just a little personal story. My nephew, I have a, a, a 10, 11 year old nephew. He is no different than many kids his age where he is on the phone and consuming bits of information. I do think there's a lot of benefit to exposing young people young children to information the brain is forming it is craving rapid fire new creations the synapses in the mind are branching and you know what i mean like they're just firing you, young kids can absorb languages uh instruments they can um i mean not traditionally but right so the difference i think and where there's a bit of a problem here is that traditionally that that age group, that window of where you're craving information and the synapses in your mind to make form new connections, you there's a lot of actual benefit to, you know, learning an instrument. Brain right? elasticity. That's really what it all is. And it, it's also producing a muscle memory talent within you art sports um reading a book Can right long event. form thinking making those connections critical thinking critical and long form i see them as the same thing for sure to be critical it has to be long form because that means you know your shit there's a it's it's almost a, a waste to give children fast food versions with no skill development with no challenge, right? Because a part of growth and character development is to be challenged. And that's what sports fills the role of. Right. So there's no actual muscle memory. There's no talent. There's no um, challenge. And then lastly, there is no long form thought process. There is little bites of information, snaps of data. And I don't think it's, you know, it's to me, it's there's no coincidence that me, the mediums you use to interface are going to color the way that you can think your quality of thoughts, because speaking to him is like speaking to a, a, a fucking cell phone that was thrown in a blender. That's just just like a snapshot of info, snapshot of info. And the other thing that kills me, man, is that. He's way less surprised and impressed by things that I say or show him. Sure. If I don't show him a yacht with a dolphin that flies over it with, through a flame of 10 rings of fire, he's, his number one thing to say to me is, yeah, I've seen that. 
disenchantment. No, you haven't. You haven't. Because you saw a five-second clip online that doesn't mean you've seen it. You don't even know what it means. You don't know the significance. That, to me, is robbery. Highway robbery that you you rob a, a young child of the joy of, of just wonder. seeing it through them, their own spirit. Where's the wonder? That, like Their own spirit. Where is the, the spirit? You know what I mean? That... Because I think about it, when we were kids, like the, the human spirit was there and so sacred that you used to uh, stand in front of a fan and go, uh, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you'd be like, blissed hey, out. Hey, you'd be like, oh my God, crazy. sound yeah, effects. We just invented a sound effect. Let me get to the studio. I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, some of you fucking rappers be like that in studios. Mm -hmm. I don't blame that's, you. That's how you sound. <laughs> fix your shit. Stop buying beats off Fiverr. <laughs> Shots fired. DJ, please oh, I'm buy sorry, man. I don't. I don't want that Fiverr rapper fucking dupe. Please don't. Don't come for me. <laughs> DJ, please buy me Doritos. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Fiverr rappers. There's there's probably a bunch of Fiverr rappers out there. I've heard a couple of them via like YouTube videos and shit like that, and. A him and a hum and a him and a hum. Him and a hum and a hum and hoo. That was pretty reverberant. <laughs> that was that was a good one. That who that who went on for a while. That had some who. It won't come through the mics. Oh, that's great. Yeah, you're wasting your breath. Oh, goodbye. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, um, that sense of lack of wonderment in. Or jadedness in the new generation due to the no, it, it does advent. produce jadedness, man. Because imagine not being impressed by anything unless it matches the most curated, often fake, right? A lot, a lot of videos Doctor that shit. are produced as content videos, where some dude jumps off a building and lands on this building and then jumps here, then lands. They're all fake. They're created. Even arguments, public arguments videos apparently are fake. I don't know if you've seen like all those viral videos of like man almost gets punched by blah, yeah, blah, blah. There's, there's yeah, all sure. sorts there's of like content that. that's like curated to go viral. And sometimes it's staged, man. So, you know, the point is, is that I, I it's like, a generation that's growing up like that, of course, of course, of course, of course, you have this type of rudderless f feeling and lack of quality of thinking, you know? It breeds neurotic symptoms, really. Just general dissatisfaction. Yeah, I, I think... Like the, it breeds depression. I think that's the message is, is I think if you're young live a few years off your cell phone and see how radically it changes your life. Okay. Cause you'll be forced to ask people questions and then you'll wind up making friends with people based on learning how to read energy. And that is so much more real than any type of glamorized version of someone on what they say online on social media. So try training yourself like uh, like Osama bin Laden did, all right? Because <laughs> for years, he used to starve himself in that Afghan desert, all right? <laughs> Up in the mean streets. In the streets. <laughs> the, the streets of Af Afghanistan, because they weren't really streets, because they weren't paved. It was mainly dirt. On those sand roads. <laughs> those dunes. <laughs> On that dust. <laughs> <laughs> On them dusty streets, all right? Bin Laden been, been doing a lot. <laughs> wow. I'm going to take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. I really... You know what? Charles goes there sometimes and really fucking says some ratchet shit. Hey, I am taking it hey, today. Yo, today is my ratchet ass moment. I'm gonna be the safe one today. Oh, and I don't know God. how this flipped, and I don't like this. I feel like I'm in Bizarro Planet because I'm supposed to be the troublemaker. Habibi, forgive me. <laughs> forgive me for I have sinned. 
I've sinned against the falafel code. (laughs) 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 Oh, my lord. But seriously, it's, it's, it's still true. I'm trying to get somewhere here on this journey. Is that, you know... You got to you got to go travel in the desert that is the journey of life. Like go out there like someone who is never going to eat the best foods again, who's never going to s- sip the good wine, taste the, you know, the finest of foods. Like push out the luxury even if it's accessible to you. Try that for a year. Try being off social media for a couple of years live your life as if technology was not the interface for life because you in time when you do get on it you're going to be a weapon you're going to be worldly you're, you're going to be worldly to say. you're going to have character but most importantly your mind is going to be uninfluenced by replication uh you know uh algorithms Everyone, I, I feel that everyone who is, and, and, the, and the problem is, is that even people who aren't on social media, aren't on the internet, are at the disadvantage of not even being able to participate in the conversation. Like, you have to understand that even the regular everyday news is being informed by social media. So it's all an echo chamber that points back to this exact same toxic media that we're trying to refute in a certain way. So even the people- I think we're there. Yeah, You're right. And, and, and even the people who aren't on this medium are still spitting the exact same facts that are on this medium, but without even the opportunity to engage in the conversation. You're really just being victimized by wherever the culture moves. And I think that that's- highly dangerous i think that across all stabilizing across all generations going from gen alpha even to you know some of the people who are hip in the greatest generation who decided to join social media i think that there needs to be a mass deep there's not many greatest generation people alive i think you mean boomers the oldest end of the boomers sure yes they're not the great generation yeah well, there are still some 80 and 90 year olds who are unwillingly on TikTok and Instagram and shit like that. You know what I mean? Bro, that's like five of them that are still alive. <laughs> the five of them who could still yeah. string together sentences. They don't, and they don't even know what they're uh, doing. They just got pushed there in the living room. Go dance for money, Come Nana. On, mama. <laughs> yeah. Nana's back. You're right. <laughs> Nana made it. Nana made it. She's a TikToker. <laughs> She she flossed once and then she was hospitalized for a month. She she, she, uh, she doesn't even she, she thinks she's in the nursing home and meanwhile her children are fucking using her to get those likes and streams. You cold heartless heartless bastards. Hey YouTube, like and subscribe and don't forget to hit that bell button so you can get all of our notifications, dude. Smash. Smash that like button. Smash it. Smash it. Cringe. Stop doing that, people. Get creative. Think your own thoughts. Deprogram yourself. How about lick that like button? <laughs> <laughs> Molest that like button in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> that is wrong. <laughs> Metabolize the subscribe button. Uh, gyrate. Gestulate. Hey guys, mustasticize that like button for me. <laughs> Dude, if I heard that, I would do it immediately. <laughs> Mustast in, in fact, okay, for the masses post- for the masses podcast, mustasticize that like button for us and also mitigate that that bell button so you can get all of our <laughs> notifications. Mitigate that motherfucker for us, please. <laughs> non mi piace. I don't like that shit. Nah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Italian bitches! Yo, probably Italiano, motherfuckers! Shout out to all of our Italian fans, friends, family. Italy!
But yes, um, I feel like there needs to be a mass deprogramming. I feel like people are too into the Matrix and it's starting to really fuck with our general psyches. 98% of the time, because, um, you know, it's easy to tell who's on what social media platform based off of what you see. Like, obviously, people in different age, age ranges gravitate towards certain things. There's certain generations right. that are represented on Reddit. There are certain rep- representatives on Facebook. There are certain representatives on Insta, on TikTok, etc. Right? As far as the mainstay of the user base. Um, on TikTok, I generally see a lot more nihilism, depressed-based shit, kind of sexual deviancy kind of shit. It's, It's a weird space, and that concerns me a lot because, obviously, TikTok is Gen Z, Gen Alpha. It's the most vulnerable generation. It's a generation who's never known a world without being tethered to the Matrix. They don't know what it, the world of just reality is. They have this hyper-glamorized, fictionalized algor- algorithm world, hyper-curated world. Oh, that's the worst part. Like, the, the fact that you have a ever-present machine that is looking at everything you do, how long you spend interacting with content and trying to create a universe for you and blocks out content. The challenge is anything you're, you may not agree with right away. Right? It's, uh, I, I think I called that exact phenomenon a, like an accidental conformity machine with no user warning. There's no user warning for the fact that this product may cause conformity. It should. It should have like a label, you know? And the only opt out is delete your account. Right. Because I remember um, in the less murky days of Facebook, there was one point when I decided to delete all my ad preferences, delete all my everything, basically start from scratch, get rid of my interests, like... No, I refute everything that you're showing me. You're putting me into an echo chamber that I don't agree with and I don't like it. So I deleted all my preferences and everything got weird on Facebook for a second. And then it got hyper curated on super certain things. Like the only thing I get now is health food and guitars. (laughs) Yeah, Those ads are fucking weird, man. They're really, really weird. And it's like, okay, so I don't mind. (laughs) Because health food and guitars, how can I get mad? That's, I can vibe with that, kind of. But the fact is, is that, you know, there's still more. <laughs> like, if, if you were really trying to create my own planet, you can really do a better job. And, and, and maybe that's the issue in of itself. Maybe this isn't as nefarious as we think. It's just that they aren't doing enough like look it's one thing if you're going to create my planet but if you're only going to create five percent of it that's not going to work yeah well i think a part of not doing a good job of of it is you know the unilateral secrecy and control of collecting data and using that the way that they wish see to see fit and there's no opt-out there's no opt-in there's no opt-out so I think, yeah, you're going to wind up bungling it if you've freaking created an entire secret army of this technology, you know? There's no, uh, think about it this way, viruses replicate even better when they're challenged, right? Mm-hmm. And I see it no difference, there's no difference between that and how Facebook, Twitter, any any of the social media giants operate with this type of clandestine iron curtain behind the, you know, the secrecy of how they use data. And yeah. It's not being challenged because you keep it a secret because you're basically playing a power game. You're playing a power game because you know that if it becomes public, it'll be one challenged, but most importantly, it could be threatened to be taken down. Because the fact is, is that in- not all of it is in good spirit. It's really creepy. 
you know it's it's creepy and i think we're whole so wholly unprepared for this technology because the constitution did not think of things that could operate on such a sub particle level that every single one of your behaviors with a particular technology would reveal choices and lack of choices and that that creates a personality profile of you that is stored on a data bank you know what i mean and then the tools that you use are then informed by this digital version of you and you know it and and now okay and I then mean, it, you know in china obviously we see how that can go extremely dark because people are are punished social currency on social currency the the credit re, uh, reward I, I think it's called a credit social credit reward system something along those lines i understand what you're referring to i i don't see that as being too far off from kind of this dystopian society that we're headed in with covid you no, know we're already halfway there with with vaccine mandates, with showing papers, are you a good citizen? Are a you a good D? citizen? And and using the stick, using the carrot, you know, to people who use the stick and the carrot on these issues, go fuck yourself, all right? Because we're not creating a two tier society. We're not doing that. We're just not. What are we doing? The fucking caste system that existed in India. We're gonna have Brahmins <laughs> and. Like what? What the fuck are we gonna Man, do? I mean, most African American people across, I, I think, up until the age of thirty or forty, even I think forty-one and under, aren't vaccinated. And in New York, even more so, the mass majority of young black people, basically the people who are the least vulnerable, who are are being pushed down a medical path, right? through choices not of their own, not of their doctor, not of the, the CDC, who even um, mirrors what your personal practitioner would say, which is if you have a pre-existing condition, if you are allergic to certain materials in these vaccines, that you should be exempt. The CDC corroborates and mirrors what your personal practitioner would say, but then the state and the city do not. That is the breakdown because you can't have governments and state authorities be in charge of what should be private and personal decisions. And That's socialism. It's communism because socialism is about, you know, equity. Communism is, yeah, how'd you like the taste of this equity? <laughs> it's like, what's great for the state yeah. is you. Now, and socialism has gone there too. Don't get me wrong. We all know of the horrors, but communism in, is just straight up. What the state do, you do. Socialism with the gun. Mm -hmm. We take all the guns from you. We got the guns. If you still have a gun, good luck. Yes. Read Alexander Shulshitsyn's work. Read it. Read the personal account of what happened and stop fucking wearing a hammer and sickle it was at this point that unfortunately the video cut out but there's a message that is about to be delivered here for the rest of the remainder of the podcast and we really really recommend you stick around for the end thanks so much baseless ideologue stuff just because it's anti-something like people interpret hammer and sickle and communism and socialism as the opposite of Americanism, of capitalism, and things like that. That whole I ideologue thing where it's just kind of like, I want to be anti for the sake of being anti. I personally, I mean, that's, that's I think, your experience. Because from my experience, anyone who wears that is like really really they're really convinced of what it means and are they're so down the rabbit hole of what hammer and sickle ideology means that they've done the work and the problem is is that they still didn't come to the conclusion that it was dumb they still didn't come to the conclusion that it was a dumbass ideology i i think that there is a new generation of misguided folk 
who are doing it simply based off of the fact that it's of course dude think about it when we were young you just throw on certain records because that was the culture that was passed down to you sure like when you're at a certain young age there's a certain amount of like click play Boom, 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 idea, meme, 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 idea, 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 and imagine the people that they're getting their information from are just like, nah, capitalism's evil, America's evil, like everything that is real and tangible for what you know, and I'm, this is like really into the weeds because defending reality the reality of capitalism being a, one of the most progressive components of human progress as compared to the rule of kings okay for the general public and I, I consider co the communism the rule of kings because it yep. resulted in the same exact result oh, as same thing. as every single other form of tyrannical, you know, top down order. It's still a hierarchy. Capitalism, democracy, and being a republic has produced the all the all the modern day rights, and including feminism itself. Feminism could not happen anywhere on earth except america a lot of its genesis comes from the benefit of creating a structured order society and none of the structure order society happened through a tyrannical king feeling pity on the masses and giving them little peons of gold nuggets economic prosperity was the key and also talent yeah if you sure. got a talent you want to start a business, Do that's it. what they did. And so many of the things we enjoy is from the talent labor of bright minds who didn't have a tyrannical government crushing their neck and became millionaires and benefited society. So yes, I think there are young people who don't have that perspective at all. And they've been weaponized. They've been weaponized by this perspective of taking the worst ills of capitalism and cherry picking them to s condemn it completely as negate it painting, which painting an own their own custom narrative of yeah. what it means to ignoring the meanwhile the atrocities of you know the communist revolution millions of people dead you know millions of people in gulags right lives destroyed but all of that is a convenient thing to neglect from the ideology because you say that it hasn't been done right it's romantic it is the epitome of the utopian ideal and utopianism i think it always comes into like it's like fashion it comes into seasons mm -hmm. of when it becomes popular and yes i completely agree that capitalism is in its crony capital phase because capitalism also has phases sometimes it goes through a crony phase and historically in our country at least we've also reined it in right to a certain extent fdr and before him really theater yeah absolutely. teddy teddy yeah. was the the one who started he he reined in broke up he he, he set the ball rolling that. absolutely so yes i i think that is a fair just system what was that the sherman act oh there's many yeah there's many absolutely i know he yeah we, we don't need to get into that because history buffs are going to be like what what you his, his monocle was on the right eye <laughs> not the left <laughs> He said, he never said walk tall and carry a big stick. He never said that. That's an inaccurate quote. The wrong type of wood and everything. I'm, I'm delete this boss gas. He didn't say anything <laughs> about boss hickory. Gas. What the fuck you talking about hickory for? <laughs> wrong wood. He was a merch man. <laughs> you tell him by the flick of his, flick of his mustache. You, I knew it when I saw him. 
it wasn't the bull moose. It was a roe moose. It's like, no, that's not true. <laughs> Teddy, Teddy was a badass motherfucker, by the way. No. You know, he got yeah. shot giving a Mid-speech speech. speech and then finished. He, finished. Was just, he was just like, behold, I have been shot. Let's continue. <laughs> Gangster. They don't make people like that anymore. No, nah, because you guys are bitch made. Bitch made. Once again, fix your shit. <laughs> Read about Teddy. Teddy got some shit to teach y'all. Yeah. Yeah. You want to no, be for real? strong? Teddy got some shit to teach y'all. Be strong. Because we need strong people. Y'all can, It's th- time to believe in yourself. There, there is going to be a gigantic societal shit test coming very soon, and please be armed for it, because yes. I ain't helping y'all niggas. Message. I ain't helping y'all niggas. I can't do it. I'm Message is, is we gotta start loving ourselves, we gotta start loving our country. And we have to show love to one another. You yes, have to we do. This. We need to start to populace. Talk to your neighbors. Speak to the people around you. Engage with society. It's not online. It is offline. Speak to the people around you because and not just the people that look like you. Exactly, everyone. Yeah, you can't. You have to start treating your feller, your fellow. I almost meant went really old school New York feller. Um, Long Island just pours out of my pores sometimes. Um, You got to start treating your fellow man and woman as your brother and sister because the ideologies the political stuff that you guys keep flirting with you're starting to other people okay unintentionally and sometimes sub- subvertedly you're you're subversively you're, intentionally yes, yes. you're you're Implicitly. basically compartmentalizing people into identities okay but that that is the antithesis of all established unifying forms of religious spiritual practice i do think people need to get more back into their spirituality spirituality is not yoga it's not it's not going to the the gym and all that all of that stuff is great but you've got to start opening your heart and being compassionate and Showing people the way, even if they haven't shown you the way. Extend the olive branch. Forgive and forget. You have to, you have to walk that path, and it, and it, you may not get what's due to you, but you shouldn't do it for the other person. It's not about gratification. It's not, and also you're not serving man. You're serving something more high, at least a higher ideal. I, I don't care if you're an atheist. You have to serve a higher ideal no matter what, because you are not the creator. You have not, you have been given this. Consciousness has been bestowed upon you and it, and it would be the least arrogant thing to do to serve some divine law, except the law of man. Man is um, the, the law of man is not divine. We could only dimly know the, the divine and, to me, that's humbling. That humbling feeling for me creates a feeling of wanting to serve a higher purpose outside the law of man. I, I, I say it and I say it again. Be in this world, but don't be of this world. Correct. Being worldly is low-key dangerous because... There's a lot of stuff here that can lead you astray. The earth is super neutral. The world is neutral. And with that in mind, the world doesn't really care about you. (laughs) And and it can lead you astray very easily if you aren't careful. And uh, same way that we said it before in another episode, you got to know the difference. You got to know where you're going. You got to know where you came from. You gotta know where the starting line is. You gotta know what your assignment is. You don't want to be a useful idiot for an idea. You do not want to be a sheep, and you don't want to not know that you're the sheep. End conformity. <laughs> end episode, maybe, but end conformity. Because <laughs> no, that's actually a break. 
Fuck that. I'm yeah, not even going to say anything after that. <laughs> I had to- Catch new episodes of the Masses Podcast right here on YouTube, and be sure to support our Patreon. You can catch us at Masses Podcast on IG, where you can find our clips and shorts. The Masses.